I'm David Scare at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. And uh, the gospel for this Sunday, the 20th Sunday in Pentecost, is Luke 16, uh, 1 to 15, a kind of a challenging account from uh, the gospel. It's about uh, a guy who is not as honest as he should be. And here is the parable. Jesus also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a steward, and charges were brought to him that he was wasting his goods. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your stewardship, for you can, can no longer be a steward. And the steward said to himself, now what shall I do? Since my master is taking the stewardship away from me, I am not strong enough to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that the people may receive me into their houses when I am put out of the stewardship. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. And then he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest steward for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal habitations. He who is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And he who is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If you then have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, how, who will trust and trust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is in others, who will give you that which is your own? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they scoffed at him. But he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Well, let's begin this with this particular in this particular story, let's deal with something which is very real and one which uh, our parishioners may have encountered. They have encountered it directly. They certainly know others who have been in this situation. And that is today. If a person is relieved of, he, he shows up for work in the morning, and if he is relieved of uh, his job, well, he's called into, the, uh, into a supervisor's office, and he is asked to turn over the keys and uh, the, the card to the, to the parking lot. And then they call in a guard who will take him to his desk. And uh, he will clear out the desk. And then they will escort him out of the building. Now this, this, this happens to be a very real, a very real occurrence. I mean, it happens. And it's a very degrading, a very degrading system. They also close down his account, his 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 computer account, uh, his computer account, so he cannot get into the uh, web system within the company and take out secrets or in some way destroy it. This is slightly a different situation. Um, this uh, this fellow is not going is not stealing anything for himself but he is making arrangements outside of 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 his business he's not taking his own, he's not taking his owner's business 
Now the owner is, is believed. Now have you, getting down to a more uh, sensitive issue, have you, ever, have you noticed that people who have worked for the state or the federal government, that when they lose their jobs, they seem almost magically to get a job outside of the government, they get a job in the private industry, and these jobs are pretty well, they pay pretty well. Well, this is, this is something which we have here, by the way. And that is a person who is looking out for his own self. Now, the key to this particular gospel happens to be the, uh, these words of Jesus in verse 13 which seem also to be bo uh, borrowed from uh, the Sermon on the Mount. No, it says no servant. It, it looks like here it's not so much a, a servant as it is a manager. The word Greek word is oiketes, is able to serve two lords or he or he will hate the one and love the other or he will work for the advancement of one and he will look down he will despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon well here you have the heart of the christian religion it almost sounds like and i'm sure luther didn't do it but luther's exposition of the first commandment in the large catechism is that uh, well everybody has a God and if we don't believe the true God who reveals himself in Jesus Christ we make our own gods and here the word uh, I don't know what your English how your English translation uh, translates uh, your English version of the Bible but the word curious might mean master but it might be better to say translated as two lords and here the uh, the antagonism the contradiction is severe you cannot advance you cannot devote yourself to money and you cannot devote you cannot devote yourself to money at the same time uh, devote yourself to God it is Jesus, Paul says does not say that money is the root of all evil he says the love of money is the root of all evil. A person who, a person who devotes himself to, to gaining as much as he possibly can for his own benefit cannot serve Christ. Now, that's not the full purpose of this particular pericope. The purpose of the pericope is this, that Christians should be as zealous in their faith as the unbelieving world is zealous in accumulating wealth for them for themselves and there is something else which is this is you know stewardship sermons they have their advantage and they have their disadvantage this comes as close to being as a, a stewardship sermon that you will find in the preaching of jesus it comes close to being a stewardship sermon and that is, the, the Jesus doesn't say that we should get rid of our wealth. He says that we should, in, we should invest our wealth in such a way so that when the time comes when we are no longer in this world, we will be received by those who have benefited by what we have done. And that's, that might sound to be a, a strange thought. But you know, it's in the book of Revelation. Blessed are those who die in the Lord and their works do follow them. And the church, the existence of the church from a human point of view has depended on the contributions of some very wealthy people. They have used what they had for the benefit of the gospel. Now, this is, a, this is kind of a sermon that could be devoted to the better members of the congregation and not necessarily to the poor.
but I think the point can be made. It's a universal. It's it's a universal principle. It doesn't depend upon how much that we have, uh, but how how we use what we have. And uh, this uh, there'll be there'll be uh, whatever. There, there are going to be many interpretations of this particular of this particular story. Uh, it's a story, apparently, which the enemies of Jesus were, were not happy to hear. It says that when he was finished with this particular parable, he said, the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they scoffed at him. Now, that's, that's an amazing... It's really beautiful here. When the Pharisee heard all these things, and it discovers them as philog, philog, argiron. Now you'll recognize the word Argentina in there. They were of, they were lovers of silver. They were they were lovers of of silver. So that does seem to be the meaning of the passage, that the Christian is to dispose, to dispose of of his own money for his own. Uh, for his own uh, dispose of his own money in order that he can do good things for other people and if we're having difficult with understanding this particular gospel the enemies of Jesus had less difficulty doing it they knew exactly what he was saying because they were the ones who were keeping the money for themselves or using their positions on uh, on earth to their well uh, for themselves it's always a very sensitive issue when the pastor has to preach about money. And uh, Lutherans are fairly generous. Evangelicals, especially Afro-American uh, evangelicals, are astoundingly, astoundingly generous with their money. And financially, they're at the bottom of the financial uh, pyramid, but they uh, they for whatever reason they want to contribute to their church, and uh, the Catholics are not so good in what they contribute. Uh, they, they 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 tell these stories of how the priest looks at the collection looks at the collection plate and assumes there's not enough money in there, so he lock, they do this as a kind of a theatrical thing. They'll lock the door, and then they'll pass the, the, the basket around again. That is, I think the people like to hear the story about passing the basket. Well, they're not putting that, mu that much money in. And how direct do you get with the people when it comes to finances? I think the less spiritual we are and the more direct we are, the more we'll get our message over. Because so, so many of our congregations are living on the edge. And some people are simply not living up to their commitment to the church and to Christ by what they give. I mean, $20 a Sunday doesn't cut it anymore. Uh, with houses in some areas going for $100,000, the $200,000, $300,000. The church needs... And, by the, and, the, and in some places, the church is being taxed, and they will be taxed. So this is a stewardship. Really means the total commitment of the individual. And uh, the uh, this might be a place, by the way. You know, you don't find the gospel. You you don't find the doctrine of justification spelled out. Uh, in the in the teachings of Jesus in the Gospels, you don't. It's it's the doctrines that you find in Galatians and Ephesians and Romans, but in verse 15 you do have something resembling the doctrine of justification, because it says about the Pharisees. Jesus says to the Pharisees, "You are those who justify yourselves before men," which means that the Pharisees work at showing how good they are before men, but in keeping the money for themselves, they are called, they are, they, they are an abomination before God. And by the word, the word abomination, 
uh, that's that's used in a very derogatory sense, almost of the Antichrist. God before God, he cannot tolerate you. For the law and the gospel, for the law and the prophets, uh, we're told John, and the kingdom of the, uh, the kingdom of the heavens uh, suffers violence. The church is always going to ent- um, en- encounter and experience uh, resentment from the world who, who wants to do away with it. Thank you very much.